What is going on, gaming nerds? Welcome back to Midnight Gaming with Mystic Nightmare. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. I appreciate it. For all of you beginners, welcome to Quarry Lake. We are back on Russian Fishing 4. Let's get started. Okay, as you can see, it is starting to rain, and we are on Quarry Lake, and it's probably going to get fairly loud. So, the first thing you want to do is turn down your audio, especially when it comes to trolling. We're going to turn that down a little bit so we can talk over the rain and stuff, because I think it's going to get a little bit loud. So, the first couple of things you need to know about Quarry Lake. One, if you have not seen my guide to advanced rod and reel setup, you need to watch that before you come to Quarry Lake. I will have a pop-up in the upper right hand corner of the screen it'll come up right about now you can click on that you can watch the advanced tutorial on how to set up your rod and reels for trolling and you really need to watch that as soon as you possibly can before you come here because you need to have that on Cory Lake if not you're going to be trying to spend a whole bunch of money on reels that you don't need to get before you get here okay second thing you need to know is when it comes down to your costs it's a little bit quiet so let's go ahead and turn the auto up audio up a little bit on the effects that's fine uh, when it comes down to costs everything here is priced more expensive you're going to hear a lot of people say don't buy anything at Cory Lake for the most part they're they're correct but you also need to take into consideration one thing when you jump into Cory Lake, it costs you 25 silver to get here, okay? So if you leave to just buy a lure, more than likely that lure is going to cost less if you were to buy it here than if you were to leave, buy it somewhere else, and then spend the 25 silver to come back and get your lure. However, when it comes down to like rods and reels, with rods and reels, they're usually priced anywhere between 100 to 200 silver more. So you're going to be better off going somewhere else to buy your rods and reels before you come here. Everything here is more expensive, plain and simple, but you just need to keep in mind it does cost you 25 silver to come back here. So you need to add that 25 silver into your total costs. If you, if it's cheaper that way, then go ahead and leave. If not, then stay here and just buy it here. Okay. Next thing you need to know is weather here is a huge, massive factor. This place has more of a fish reaction to weather than I've ever seen on any of the other lakes. If it goes super cold, if it goes super hot, you have different reactions the fish have to those weather conditions, okay? So you're going to start dealing with the weather mechanics here for the most part more than anywhere else you're going to you're going to run into. Uh, for example, if it gets hot, now on the average, let's let's start out with this. Uh, go into here. On average, your average temperature here is around 10 to 11 degrees. If you're starting to hit 13, 14, 15 degrees, then it's hot. If you're starting to get down to the eights, seven, six, fives, then it starts to get cold. Okay, now some of the reactions the fish will have, if it gets hot, the fish will move from the shallow areas into the deeper holes. If you didn't know this is, a, this is actually a mechanic in the game, now you do. When it's hot, they move into the cooler areas of the deep holes. When it's really cold, they'll move out of the deep holes into the shallow, shallower areas where it's warmer. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you're seeing temperatures at five, six, seven degrees, it's great for burbot fishing, but when you're trolling during the day, you might actually want to go, um, that's actually kind of cold, so you might actually want to be fishing in the eight degree area, um, or the eight degree, the eight meter area, the four, five meter areas out in these shallower areas and hitting those more than the 10 and the 15 meter holes. But if it's super hot, then you wanna be running over top of these um, 15 to 10 meter holes, especially the 12 meter hole, okay? All right, that being said, there's a dairy store here. This is where you get all your cheeses and stuff that makes you fart a lot, okay? Uh, basically, cheese here is the higher grade cheese. When you do uh, ground bait and stuff like that, you can use this cheese and you can use the cheese as well as, that is store-bought as well, okay? So if I were to go into my inventory and type cheese, mm. I've got 
this type of cheese and then I've got this type of cheese. So you can use both of those in a ground bait. So if you want an extra cheesy ground bait, you can use it. You can get one of your cheeses here and this is where you get the cheese to craft your cheese cubes to fish with. Fresh milk, cottage cheese, sour cream, that's all here as well, okay? Uh, all right, so I think that's it when it comes down to the disclosures on starting everything here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about two things, basically. During the day, you're going to be trolling. During the night, you can continue trolling if you want, but your bite rate is going to drop considerably, okay? You may want to switch over to burbot fishing or bream fishing at night. So we're going to start with rods and, well, yeah, I guess we need to start with rods and reels before we go over all of that stuff. Okay, so we'll start with reels first. Actually, we'll start with rods first because they're easier. When it comes down to rods, on your uh, feeder rods, there are a couple of feeder rods that I highly recommend. If you're going bottom of the line, cheapest you can do, that still works here. Your Palmer feeding, your Palmer feeder rod works absolutely great here. It's a 12 kilogram, 12.5 kilogram load capacity, and it works great. It's absolutely fine. Just keep in mind when you get into Burbit here, your records are going to be around 910 for your burbot fishing i believe it is if i can actually find there's your burbots right there so almost 12 kilograms okay so keep in mind if you get the palmer fishing rod then you're going to be looking at a little bit of a fight if you hook into one of those trophies those trophy burbots at night okay but they do absolutely work uh, i believe you can use the fantasia as well this is a good one you could use the 14 kilograms here any of those uh that's a good one that you could use um, the Palmer is a pretty cheap one. It's not expensive and it works great. I like using it. Which one do I recommend? I recommend using the Fortuna feeders, the 19 kilogram Fortuna feeders. This is going to make sure that you're over the kilogram limit of the um, of the burbot here. And it's not a super expensive rod, to be honest with you. And it works absolutely great here, too. So when it comes down to real, or I should say rods for trolling, trolling are pretty simple here. There's two. Where's my spinning rods? The first one, if you're going cheap, inexpensive, I don't want to say cheap, inexpensive, heavy, the Express Fishing Heavy S80XH, 15.4 kilograms. This works absolutely fine here. A lot of people tell you, eh, don't get that. Go for a Super Duty. You can go for a Super Duty. That's fine. I'll show you the Super Duties in a second. But this is a cheap way to go. 285 silver, and you will still be able to use this on Volkov River. I have used mine on Volkov River when I was fishing for my Super Duty, for the money for Super Duty. Your Super Duty is down over here, Siberia Super Duty, and it's the s 88 x and it 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 s a d h x h english good america okay so 30.5 kilograms if you decide to go with this it's a lot more expensive but this rod will last you for freaking ever definitely a good rod you can definitely go for something like that no problem whatsoever i believe there's also the model ones that people were looking at yeah the model ones are good too 35 kilogram those are great a little bit more expensive um so you can go for something like that as well when it comes down to your reels i have multiple reels to talk about the first one this is your absolute bare minimum reel that you want to use here it is the Express Fishing Adriatica. It is 517 silver here. Down at Mosquito Lake, it's 472. Okay? Uh, or Oldberg. Actually, I think I the only place I found this in stock was Oldberg recently. So if you're using this video anytime soon, try Mosquito, try Winding, and then go to Oldberg. You might find it there. Uh, 7.5 kilogram drag weight, 14 0.7 kilogram mech weight, which means you cannot go over a 10 or 11 kilogram line with this, okay, because of the mech weight. You're probably looking at a 15 kilogram mech weight line going, no, maybe I should use this. No, don't. Just use a 10, 11, 12 kilogram mech line 
or not mech line, but kilogram line weight, and you should be absolutely fine with the Adriatica. I will warn you with the Adriatica though, if you hook into a large fish here, you're going to be chasing it down with your boat and it will probably take you a while to get it in. Once you get it in, you'll probably end up having to repair your Adriatica, but it is fairly cheap, okay? I have a recommendation on one that's better to use. This is the Express Fishing Pride. The Express Fishing Pride 6000S is a 7.5 kilogram drag weight reel. It is 532 silver down at Winding Rivulet, or mosquito here at 612 so it's definitely worth your while to go over to one of those areas purchase it there and then come back here it is a 16 point it's a 16 kilogram mech weight reel which means you can use a 15 kilogram kilogram uh braided line with this absolutely fine okay that's why i suggest this one because you can use a higher uh, a higher line kilogram weight the next one is the Proton. Now, we used to have Proton Pros. They went out of stock and they were replaced with the Pulsars. We'll go over the, Pul over the Pulsars in a minute. The Proton 6000 is an 8.5 kilogram drag. It is a 17.8 kilogram mech weight, which means you can use easily a 15 kilogram braided line with this. It is actually a pretty decent proton or a de pretty decent reel as just the regular protons go. It is 629 silver elsewhere. I do not know how much it is here because it is out of stock, but uh, trust me, you're probably going to want to buy it somewhere else. However, if you're going to go for something like this, I highly suggest just holding off and going for the Saber 60S, which is this one here, or the Pulsar Sputnik Pulsar 6000. This is what you are aiming for. These two reels right here are the two reels that you are aiming for to purchase while you're here. Okay. Now, the Saber 60S is a nice reel because it has a large drag weight. It's got a 10 kilogram drag weight. It's got decent line capacity. The problem with this one isn't really a problem. It's just you got to understand it's got a 21.5 kilogram mech weight which means you're not gonna to wanna to use anything over a 17 to a 19 kilogram braided line on this. Because when the mech, the when the mechanics in it starts to wear down, eventually those are gonna get low enough where they're gonna drop below the line kilogram weight. And then you're gonna break your reel if you accidentally screw up and you max out your tension line, okay? That's why I'm I like this one. I really do. I really like this one a lot. In fact, I'm going to purchase my own pretty soon here for my um, my Balinese rod. However, I kind of prefer the Pulsar a little bit better. I own one of these. I like it a lot. It is the carbon copy replacement of a Sputnik Proton Pro. It has the exact same stats. It is a 9.5 kilogram drag weight reel. It is 1,249 at Mosquito or Winding, so go purchase them there. And it has a mech weight of 26.6 kilograms. Now that's important because you can use upwards of a 21 kilogram line on this, okay? 21 kilogram braided line. And that's kind of why I like these a little bit better. You can just get a bigger line on here if you want. But it's also got a great line capacity, so if you wanted to go with the 15 kilogram line capacity, then you would get a lot more line here. I believe these are actually fairly close when it comes down to, yeah, line capacity. So you get a little bit better line capacity with the Pulsar, I do believe. Yeah. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. These are the two reels that you are aiming for, and you are aiming for either the rods, as I was saying before, on the spinning rod, you're either aiming for the Express Fishing Heavy at 15 kilograms or the Super Duty, okay? So there's your rods, there's your reels. You can use the, the Pulsar and the Sabres here to fish for burbot, no problem uh, whatsoever. When it comes down to your burbot, basically with your burbot, you're going to be looking at three different holes, your 10 meter hole, your 15 meter hole, and your 12 meter hole. I highly suggest trying out your 10 and your 15 first. I can tell you right now, as of this date, which is October 23rd, the fish are right here. The burbots are right here. 
okay so what you're going to be looking at in that capacity is say you got a fortuna feeder this is a 19 kilogram load capacity i've got a 15 kilogram line on it it's a braided line um 40 kilogram mesh cage i've got burbot feed on it which this is my burbot feed right here uh, and then with the leader i've got an 11.2 kilogram leader you can go up to a 15 kilogram if you want here it's up to you i start out if you're a beginner i would start out with a six a medium six an eight or a six to see what you're you're going to get with that then move up to a four and then move up to a one depending on how quickly the burbot are biting the burbot here used to bite like absolute psychopaths the devs did something i don't know what they did but they don't bite as well you used to get anywhere between eight to ten burbots a night now you if you're lucky you'll get four okay so that's a pretty decent setup right here this is pretty much what you're looking at and you can use your pulsars or your sabers on this you can use the adriatica the express fishing pride just keep in mind if you hook into those big trophies that you're gonna you know you're gonna be in in, in for a little bit of a fight when it comes down to bait for burbot at night your burbot are going to start out at 2300 and are going to go all the way up to 10 a.m I usually get mine around 6 a.m. Fish pieces, and I know fish pieces, at this point you probably don't have that open yet, so you may have to spend gold on it or ask a friend. Do not ask me because I do not have premium anymore and I will not give those out anyway. <laughs> I have to catch the fish and then make them and turn them into fish pieces. People aren't going to likely give those to you. As a secondary bait, you can utilize nature night crawlers these actually work really really well i caught one just a, the night before before i started this video so yeah you can definitely use nature crawlers again medium six i'm using 11 kilogram line here like i said you can go up to 15 42 kilogram sinker or you can do a cage um, with burbot feed in it and as you can see i'm using an old sputnik proton pro this is the same thing as a pulsar okay this entire setup works absolutely great here no problems whatsoever and then all you're going to do is if you're going here let's see uh, do i have a reel no i do not i need to grab my other reel hold on just one second just hold your horses you're going to come out here and this is called the key now the actual name of this is is spelled quay but it's called the key and you're out here on this little jetty out here you're going to aim for the island as you can see i'm aiming for the 10 foot or 10 meter hole and you're going to do a cast about 80 percent 60 to 80 percent this will get you in the hole and that's it you're done now if it is hot that means the burbot have been moving out and this is like i said this is going to be at night so if it's hot, the burbot are going to be moving out of these areas. They're going to move from the 10 meter hole over here to the 8 meter or over here to the 4.5. So if you're going to go for them when it's hot, 12, 13, 14, 15 degrees, and you're noticing there's nothing there, then you may want to cast over here into this 8 meter hole or cast a full 120% over here into this stuff right here, into the 4.5. It's probably actually right about here, and that'll work. Uh, I'm going to jump over to the island, and we're going to show you that real quick, and then we'll jump into the trolling. I'll be right back. Okay, we are pulling up to the island here. Now, with the island, it's kind of fun, because basically you're all out here, you're secluded, and the cool thing is if you look at the, the water right there, it is just an absolute drop-off. I mean, look at that. Look at that drop-off right there. It is absolute drop-off. This is the 15-meter hole. Now, you got a couple of choices here. One, you put away your rod and you pull out one that actually has a reel on it. Your first spot right here, what you can do is you just go straight out to this area and you're going right into the middle of the 15 meter hole. You're looking at about a 40 to a 60% cast and then you just let it sit. I even actually put my rod down so I can let the bait float to the very bottom. Okay, so that's going to be your first area right there. Your second area, if I can find another freaking reel, nope, I cannot find another one. We'll just use this one then. I might actually have, do I not have a reel? I can just throw the spark on real quick. Let's pick this one up instead. 
The second one we're gonna do, and don't use a spark here, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You see that beach out there? You're gonna be aiming at that. I got the hiccups. You're gonna be aiming at that. You're gonna be going for this right here, this shallow area right here. This, within the last couple of days of playing the game, in game time, last couple of hours, is where I've caught burbot, okay? You don't believe me? Fine. Burbot. Uh, burbot. There you go. Right there. Burbot. Uh, go ahead and cast to about a 60% to an 80% right out here, and that'll drop you right into this nice little shallower area right here. And I find this is where I've actually been catching them between about 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now, you can catch them all through the night, 2300 all the way up to 10 a.m. If you're catching a lot of burbot, I highly suggest staying until 10 a.m. because burbot sell very, very well, okay? If you're not and you're only getting a few, I would stay until about 8 a.m. max and then I would start trolling again. That's really up to you. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, Mystic, I know that there's bream here on Quarry Lake. Yes, there is. Everything that I've said about burbot goes for the exact same thing with bream. So, except for the baits, you're going to be using pretty much the same setups, the same everything. Now, you can use a lower kilogram setup if you want for the bream. If, it, you know, if you really, really desire it, you can use, you know, a four kilogram setup if you want for the bream. But recently, and I'm stuck, and I'm stuck. Recently, over here... Uh, right here is actually where it was right here was a super hyperactive bream spot it is dead now so don't go over there but if you can find your bream a lot of times people will fish the exact same spots they do to get bream as they do to get burbots so actually was i saying over here it wasn't over here it was over here i'm sorry this was the super active bream spot right here um aiming towards that 12 meter hole and it was actually like 10 meters right here or 10 yeah 10 meter clip right here super hyperactive bream spot that is no longer active but most people will try to get the 12 meter hole the 15 or the 10 meter hole and then try the eight and the four meters hole holes to try and get bream everything is the exact same setup as it is for burbot so everything that i've said for burbot will go for bream as well so now let's talk about lures and trolling i gotta go back to the mainland first Okay, so this is kind of an ideal setup for trolling. Very basic bottom of the line. You're aiming for the Sputnik Pulsars or you're aiming for the Saber 60s. Fishing line uh, with the Sputnik Pulsars, 15 kilograms, fine. With the Saber 60s, I wouldn't go above 12 kilograms because their mech weight is. Actually, no, you're okay. You would be okay. Yeah, your Sabre 60, I'm sorry, your Sabre 60 is 21 kilograms, so I wouldn't go above 17, 19 at the most when it comes down to your kilogram weight. But with your Pulsar, you can easily go up to 15 because it's a 26 mech weight, okay? The Sabre 60 is at 21 mech weight. You have pike out here. Now, the largest you can buy, and this is kind of irritating to me because the devs kind of screwed everybody on starting the game new as a new player. You used to be able to get fluorocarbon leaders at 15 to 17 kilograms. At that point, at this point, I would recommend nothing less than a 15 because you have pike out here that are as big as seven kilograms. They will bite through an 11 to a 10 kilogram in fact they may bite through a 15 kilogram it's not very often that they do so you're probably going to be okay with an 11 kilogram but you're going to need to start looking at this point into going into your lures or leaders and making your own leaders okay to do that you need the fish carna fishing tool and then you need to go in and you need to purchase fluorocarbon line you can do regular line or you can do leader material line either will work Okay, and you're going to go for like maybe a 15 to a 17. I suggest a 17 or a 15. Go into your accessories. You're going to get your swivel and you're going to go ahead and get like a load capacity 18. You want it to be a little bit higher than your line capacity and you're just going to make that. Okay. Uh, 
as of right now i've got a 17 kilogram on my super duty i'll switch it over to this heavy to for it as an example so you guys can see that so 17 kilogram you could use a 13 kilogram if you wanted here's the 17 that's basically going to be your setup right there this is what you're going for and if you really want to you know get on where you want to be on the uh, get on the level where you want to be here you want to go with the super duty load capacity or super duty 30 load capacity um fishing rod but as of right now you can use this right here okay so this is going to be your setup right here as you can see this is higher than your max drag if you don't know why that is again go and watch my advanced rod and reel setup and that'll explain why let's talk about lures when it comes down to your lures when you were a beginner and you were coming here you are going to run into one major problem and that is your wobblers are not going to be open you're not going to be able to use them more than likely unless you stayed spin fishing somewhere else for a very long time and you opened up wobblers your wobblers should not be open by the time you get here so you're going to be either using spoons or spinners is it here yes it is the horn no it's yes it is the hornet 3003 used to be the king of Cory lake it is no longer the king uh unfortunately it started to catch smaller fish and then it pretty much stopped catching altogether however the hornet 1007 i found actually works here surprisingly enough it works here now it's not huge fish they're actually usually slightly smaller fish but it will still work here for you if you want to try this one out um, as a beginner this is definitely a spinner that you can use also the spiker 2018 surprisingly enough will catch fish here however as of right now what is hot on the spinners is the aquila 4004 and the aquila 4006 these both work i do believe the 4008 should work as well so if i were you and i use these on belaya river then i would come out here and just start using those because that'll get you a nice beginner setup to start out with okay uh, I've tried a lot of other spinners I've tried the bells and stuff and nothing really works other than the hunter 3 uh, the hunter 1007 the Aquila 4004 and the Aquila 4006 all three of those will work okay um, when it comes down to what you probably want to go for first is the hunter 1002 spoon this will catch fish here I've already tested it today the hunter 1001 will also catch fish here i tested it today i tested the 1007 it didn't do that great of a job i tested the hunter 2008 it actually worked decently i was able to catch a few fish but i've been having the best luck today on spoons with these two so i highly suggest going for these two right here if you're if you're starting out and you can't use wobblers now wobblers when you open up wobblers this opens up a whole new world of big fish for you okay wobblers are kind of the king of quarry lake now this wobbler right here the dp crank 6002 was badass it was amazing for such a long time then the green one became amazing then this one became amazing these here i have tested today they work still however here's my secret that nobody else knows right now i've caught some big fish on this one right here today the ulf crank 3006 i have caught some big fish on this today i was super surprised now i switched out the hooks to an ultra treble f6 or fs6 you can switch it out to a size one if you want these are size sixes uh let me show you here by weight this was caught on that one this fish was this one was this one was all of these larger fish up here were all caught on that white one and nobody else knows about it except for me i figured that out today i was really excited about that so that is a really good lure that you guys might want to try out if you're seeing this video within the next couple of days real life days what i'm talking about okay so that one is working out here as of right now everybody's under the same impression the snatcher s 001 
is working here and the s003 some people have started to complain that this one isn't working as well anymore i tested it today i was able to get fish on it still but i'm getting a little bit better bite rate on the snatcher s003 okay now the s008 and the s009 are ones that you used to use on volkov i have those left over from volkov i'll probably be trying those later i don't know if they work as of yet i just haven't had the time to fish for them but these two right here are the ones that everybody's using and then also this one right here is uh quite a few people are using but like i said here's your little secret guys right there that's it try that one out trust me you won't be disappointed so when it comes down to trolling hardest thing in the world is to do this right here big circle lots and lots and lots and lots of circles that's all you got to do here that's it period now a lot of people recently well, what they've been doing is they've been going down in here coming up turning around down up turning around and that's all they've been doing me personally i've been going into a circle today i've been doing absolutely fine this area right here when you come past the 15 meter hole and you come into here this is my favorite area because i always seem to catch really big fish here okay um and then i also catch them along here and then i also catch them in the 10 meter hole fairly rarely i'll catch them over here but i'll come around here i'll catch a few in here and then i'll get big fish here here and here all right so when it comes to trolling this lake is so small it's not really even worth me showing you on an actual boat but i can go ahead and do that um now if you're finding that everything here is not biting very well try coming out to the 12 meter hole and doing this type of a motion here because what that's going to do is there's a lot of times that their fish will actually be hiding right here and you'll catch one right in here now when it comes to beginners and trolling we need to get out there uh and i'm going to show you something i'll be out there we'll we'll be out there in a second okay so one of the biggest mistakes that i see people make is how they troll all right now because this is going to be your first time trolling if i hit m and i look like i'm actually in the 10 meter hole i am but only with my boat and my player if you take off and you go 120 percent throw as you can see my lure is way out there now so instead of me and my lure being right here inside the hole my lure is actually right out about here so when you troll on this river or this lake you need to make sure you troll slightly past the hole and then turn around and start following the outside of the hole so what that's going to help you do is it's going to pull your lure so it comes in here and then it follows inside the actual hole so you need to go past the hole take a left and come out and that'll pull your lure directly through the actual hole itself okay now the next thing that you need to know is you can actually fight a fish if you don't know this and you're a beginner you can actually fight a fish and chase it down at the same time with your trolling boat okay so what you can actually do you see how i'm past the hole now i'm gonna take a hard turn and see if we can get lined up here i'm gonna pull this crank through this 10 meter hole and as you can see, I've got the pole in my hand, I've got the reel in my hand, and now I'm actually a little bit further than I wanted to be because I'm too busy talking. But as you can see, I'm actually pulling the lure through the 10 meter hole now because my lure is actually right out about here, okay? But as you can see, I'm controlling the boat while I've got the lure, or while I've got, God, while I've got the rod and the reel in my hand okay so you can do that the problem comes when i see people they hit g and they stop the motor completely and then they stop trolling and then they start fighting a fish and then they realize oh crap i need to follow this fish how do i do it i can't start trolling if i press j hands are busy i can't start trolling so what do you got to do you got to put your rod down you got to press j to start trolling and then you got to pick your rod up again and then you can control your boat so you can chase down the fish okay so that's kind of one of the biggest mistakes that i see people making is one they don't go past the holes to get their lures inside the holes and two they don't know that they can actually chase down a fish while they're trolling 
okay so like i said before with this you're just basically going to come and you're going to do big circles all the way around if it's hot then make sure that you hit over these deep holes if it's cold make sure you hit closer into this area in here or you go further out where it's more shallow by the way sven trout seven trout is what you're kind of looking for if you go into these short small shallow areas right here you can get some big big seven trout and those big seven trout will make tons of money okay Corey chars will make tons of money out here oh that's one problem this stupid lure has is it shows that there's a fish on but there's not um and i'm going to give you guys another secret this is my little own personal secret that somebody else told me so it's not really my own personal secret i can't remember the dude's name though um if you guys pull in a quarry char, and it's a bright red char, if you pull in one that's under one kilogram, okay, it's called a baby char. You pull that bad boy in, immediately stop your boat and cast about five to ten times in that same area where you caught that char. And I will bet you money that you'll catch at least four or five fish, one after another, by doing that i don't know what it is it's, it's just a thing that a couple of us kind of noticed that when we catch a baby we stop and we just sit there and cast with that lure out four or five times and we can actually catch quite a few fish by doing that so there's another little secret there's one other secret i'm going to give you guys when 1900 hours hits hold on to your butts hold on to your butts and this is why for some reason, when 1900, between 1900 and 2300 hour hits, the big fish come out and they start attacking your lures. And that's when you can catch a really, really, really big fish. Okay. So most of the day you have a chance of catching a big fish, whatever, but it seems like every time that, that, that time runs around, that time comes around, I pull in a monster, you know, five, six, seven kilogram, upwards of a nine, nine kilogram, you know, lake trout or Sven trout or something like that. And it's usually right here where we're at now or right over here around the 10 meter hole. Okay. So if you learned something, hit the like button. If you didn't, don't hit it. Just make sure no matter what you do, subscribe. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. Hopefully you guys enjoy Corey Lake. Keep gaming, keep doing it at midnight, have a blast. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care, have a good one, and bye-bye.